Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Influencer Marketing Series. My name is Tosin Ajibade. On today's episode, we're talking about how to find your niche as an influencer. So today I have with me a special guest. His name is Olufemi Ogutamu. He's the CEO of Penzaville Africa. Welcome, Olufemi. <laughs> Hi, Tosa. <laughs> I'm the creative director and lead consultant for Pezaville Africa. And Pezaville Africa is now a social media agency and we undo social media campaigns for brands. And, you know, so um, how did it all start with you? So um, it started with me being an influencer and uh, being an influencer, not like I learned to become an influencer. I think I just grew to becoming an influencer. So I started while I was in university. I used to have... Um, a BlackBerry phone then, and my BlackBerry contact then was almost like 1,005. So on campus then, you know, for you to have a BlackBerry back then, and you have a lot of contacts, it means that you are popular and people know you. So I, when I send broadcasts, you can tell that it will reach almost everybody on campus, at least every department. So that was how we started. Then people started asking me to send broadcast messages for their events, for their church programs, for their faculty dinners and all that. So I was doing it for free, but later I just realized that, ah, if I'm doing this thing for free and people keep coming to me, it means that there is something that um, I have that they do not have. Mm. So I started charging them for BIS money. Mm. So I'm like, okay, pay BIS money now. Pay me 500 naira BIS money. So they started paying me peanuts. But you know that like this generation, they don't know what BIS money is. They don't know is. BIS money. So let's just say subscription. <laughs> yes. <laughs> subscription. So I pay me um, subscription money. So then I will just send broadcast and put mouthpiece at Penza. That's mm. my nickname. So mouthpiece at Penza, then they'll give me 500 naira recharge card. So I started getting recharge cards, then I wasn't getting physical cash. So I realized, okay, let's change this thing to pay Something me cash. tangible. Something tangible. So she started paying me 5K, 10K and all that. So it just started from Blackberry. Then afterwards, we moved, I moved to Instagram, Facebook, then Twitter, then became Instagram. So I just opened um, this platform, then cross-promoted them and all that. So I mean, I just became an influencer like that and brands started paying me to to post but before you get to brands started paying you start from somewhere from because somewhere. today we know like today we talk about we see a lot of influencers you know come on board i want to be an influencer oh yeah. i am an influencer oh this is what i do this is what i do but for a lot of people they, they started from somewhere and i like the fact that you said you started from blackberry yeah. you know you know like years ago if we didn't have a blackberry we nobody nobody yeah. i remember when i had got my first blackberry mm -hmm. i actually prayed <laughs> to get it, to get I it. Think three times you know, I actually prayed, you know, when I got my first bag, it was really, it was really something yeah. tangible and very, something very precious to me at that time. So, but looking at it today, everybody has a smartphone. If you don't have a smartphone, like you, at least you have something that you're connected with mm -hmm. on social media. But people just assume that becoming an influencer is just something that you just need to, you know, flip, you know, just do like this and then you, you, you are already an influencer. But for, some, for something you just mentioned, and you talked about where you started, how you started and how you saw something in you before, then you started charging people, yeah. you know, but because for, for me, my own story is just something different. So we're not talking about me today, you know. So looking at people that are actually watching this uh, um, um, video, I want you to give, tell them something like, because a lot of them would say, I want to be an influencer, but they don't even know where to start from. So how can one start to become an influencer? So the first thing is, what exactly do you love doing? What do you I love to talk. joy doing? Yeah, so I love to so if you, if you like, for example, if you like talking, then it means that you can start um, being a vlogger. Okay. So, but, but again, I want people to understand that being an influencer is not the end result. Okay. The first thing is what do you find joy doing? The next thing now is how do you get money um, from what you love doing? Mm. So, being a, because the, the problem everybody has on social media now is everybody wants to become an influencer. They True. think that when they can buy a page that has a large following, automatically mm. they become an influencer. Yes. Influencing is not about numbers, it's about the engagement. But mm. people want to listen to you, not about the large followers you have. Mm. So, over time, I keep telling people that be influencer, I think we've spoiled the whole influencer thing in this country. Everybody now, when you go to almost everybody's page, you see influencer digital influencer and all that. So I feel that um, we need to, be, first of all, understand the basics of being an influencer. From the word influencer, it means people that you can um, influence. How influential are you? I cannot influence you to say, those things wear this shoe, don't wear this. Mm. So the first thing is, how, are pe how, how do you love, what do you love exactly? That's one. Then two, how can you influence people 
to make decisions for that thing you love. Mm. So if I love eating, mm. how have I been able to um, influence, influence me. you to eat this food or to eat from or this to go to this restaurant? This restaurant. So I think it's it's um, it's a journey. Mm. It's not a one day thing. True. And to become an influencer, it means that over time people actually have seen you doing that thing over and over again. Over and over again, and you have to be very consistent. Mm. I mean, so like for you, for example, I'm sure that most people who who know Tosin today would have, uh, I mean, know Tosin before yes, now, but, yeah. can say a lot about you, you mm. know, and say, oh, she has been consistent on this on this lane, mm. even if you try to involve and all that, but the same story. Mm. So that's the problem people have. People just feel that I can wake up one day and, and become, become an, influencer. an influencer. What is an influencer? Who is an influencer? Who is an influencer? <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody is an influencer. Yeah, everybody is an influencer. So, I mean, like, I, I made this, I made this, um, this um, example. An influencer, when we were in university, we had class reps, we had class captains and all that. True. Can, I mean, you'd be surprised that most of these guys are not even the influencers in their class. Mm. So it's not even about title now. You could be the CEO of your company, but you might not be as influential as the staff in that company. So influence, influencer is not a title. It's rather an attitude. Mm. And over time, how people have come to respect you for your decision making. So you've talked about niche. You've talked about passion. Yeah. You've talked about money. I've had money. Mm, money. <laughs> Very important. Very so important. a lot of people that are watching this video would assume and say, hey, yeah, just talk it, talk it, talk it. How can I make this money? How can, okay, what do you think I can do then for people to then pay me for what I do? Because today now we see that brands use a lot of influencers. Yeah. If a brand wants to announce a campaign now, an influencer is who they call. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't go through the other route. Yeah. Like, well, like, I'm not trying to put in, bring in um, traditional, traditional media and then digital media. media. Yeah. I'm just trying to say that this is what brands go for now no. today. They say, let us work with this person. Let yeah. us work with that person. They make that decision like this because they feel, they see that this person has money engagement, mm -hmm. so they want to work and collaborate with that particular influencer. So how can these new influencers, or how can people who are actually thinking of becoming an influencer, how can they be found or seen on social so, media? So now, we have so many people who, who, who are influencers. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, number one, the passion. Number two, your content. So if your content is very key, and I mean content is key, it's and your it's content important. makes it's a lot of sense, and people go to you because not because they know many people who do the same thing like you do, but there's something that differentiates you from these guys. So what's your USP? What's your unique selling, selling point? Point your proposition. What makes you different from Mrs. B, Mrs. C? So I feel that um, that's the problem most people have. Most people just feel most people just tweet and post normally, but what style do you have? What would make you make me come to your page? than going to another page. It could be the neatness of your page, it could be your captions, it might be witty, it might be... Captions are something else that you must talk about. Yeah. <laughs> it, might be, it, it might be, it might be the, the, the way you position your pictures. I mean, there are food bloggers that, there are food bloggers and there are food bloggers. Mm. You know, there are food bloggers and there are food bloggers. And you can see some food bloggers that they will post the food, but you won't really, you won't really feel like eating. Mm. But there are some, there are some food bloggers that will post, and by the time you see it, you, have eat, you might have eaten like 10 minutes before, but you feel hungry again. So it might, it might take them time to take the picture, positioning, lighting, editing, and posting. Mm. And most importantly, using the right um, captions and hashtags. Mm. So the first thing is compassion. The next thing is content. And um, you've talked about content creation, yeah, you've content talked about hashtags, hashtags, which is a lot of things because today we see people say, Oh, I want to be an influencer. Yeah. We've talked about already, but I know that we are also getting so many. So I'm going to ask you one question What are your top three content creation tools that you use so, on a so, daily basis? So for me, I have to be very, very sincere with you. I mean, you asked this question before we started, and I have to be very sincere with you. I am a creative person, so I sit down and create content. I do not, the only tools I use are tools that can enhance my content. For example, I need to edit the picture to make it sharp, sharp, sharp uh, hair. So I know tools like, um, um, I use, so so on PhotoGrid, right? PhotoGrid just helps you resize your picture, but I also use PhotoGrid in a funny way to, to touch up pictures. Then when I'm posting on that platform, I mean, there are many tools. There is, um, there is, um, what's the this cool? There, yes. there's, there's this cool, there's, but, but for me, right? So that's for iPhone users. That's for iPhone, iPhone users. <laughs> iPhone users. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I use this code yeah. too. But most importantly, I don't try to touch on my pictures too much. Okay. I make sure that I take nice pictures from nice angles and I use the phone setting to edit. Mm. That is for me. But mm. some people will take one picture and use like three, four apps to touch it up. There are lots of, lot of editing apps. Yeah, apps. There are lots of editing apps. For me, I don't use them. I just, I just pick. 
I just feel that to me, I just feel that you have to be natural. Okay. I mean, that's for me. I feel that if, you, if your picture is not fine, it's not fine. No matter the editing, no matter the touching, that's what I feel. But you know, some people use those editing apps to enhance. To, uh, well, to enhance. Don't let us talk about that anyway. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> something came to my mind, but let me say. Don't worry. <laughs> so, so, the truth is. Uh, there, there are many tools, there are many I apps, know, but, the, but the major thing you is... You've mentioned PhotoGrid. Photo, I've mentioned PhotoGrid, mm -hmm. and that's the major thing I Visco, use. Visco, there's Visco, yeah, Visco, I use Visco, PhotoGrid. The Visco for me just gives me, just makes my page have a feel. Then on my personal page, um, the arrangement is different, so I put it in like PhotoGrid, like I said, and it, make, it gives me the white background, so it gives my page a very neat feel. Mm. Like, for example, when I post a picture today, it's, it's going to be a different location and setting and camera camera angle and lighting tomorrow. Mm. So so that my page doesn't look very rough funny. And, and funny. So I put it in a photo grid to make it balanced. So by the time I'm talking about A, I'm talking about B tomorrow, it has a different feel. And when you come to my page, it looks interesting. Mm. So that's for me. I read you not sincerely. Some people will tell you a lot of tools that they don't even use. Okay. Yeah, I will not come and tell you. No problem. I don't use. Uh, at least now that you know you use photo grid <laughs> and you use some enhancement tools, we know all those tools that you use. Don't worry. Okay, so I also want to ask one final question. The final question is mention your top three influencers. This is hard now. Why it's not hard. Think about it. Top so, three influencers. Oto. For Instagram. Yeah. For Instagram, I will pick Toke Makewa. Okay. I mean, so now, before I, before I talk about this, I won't pick these guys because they're my guys or I love them. Just pick your top Because three. of the engagement. No problem. So I'll pick, I'll pick Toke Makewa. Okay. I'll pick Debala Williams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll pick Debala Williams. So. The um, last person. For Instagram. Anyone. It could be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Um, Snapchat. Ah, no, let us go. Someone else speak, but I don't. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, um, I'll pick Omojua. Omojua. Yeah, so Omojua. your top three influencers number are Tokoe Makiwa. Okay, number two, Debola. Number three, Omojua. Omojua. Then those are, I mean, general content people. And reason why I like, so let me let me give you a reason why I like Tokoe. I mean, the reason why I, I, I picked Toke is not because she takes fine pictures or anything, but because she finds a way to influence people whichever way. Mm. So you might talk about her whichever way, but you would definitely want to follow her and, and see, what, and she's see doing. what she's doing. So it means that she has built that, um, you know, following follow, yeah, Already. over time. Therefore, Debola Williams right. and Omojua, I'll pick them because they are vast. Yes. They know different. That's the problem most influencers have. They pick one niche and they focus on it all their life. Mm. So how vast are you in other... On that, if, yeah, yeah, all right then. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of this episode. And if you have any question regarding this topic, please drop your questions below and we'll respond to you. So please follow us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Olori Supergirl, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. And you can also follow me on social media at Tito Sinajibadi on all platforms. So guys, I'll see you next week with a new guest. And uh, until then, au revoir. <laughs>